And welcome to In This Corner with Cyrus Fees. We have a huge episode here and uh, very excited about this one as a guy that I consider one of the greatest heavyweights that's ever been in the UFC, ever competed in MMA. And I just so happen to have a connection to the guy, so that makes it even much more fun. So let's go down through his credentials here. 13-year veteran of mixed martial arts, one-year veteran of pro wrestling, two-time Division I All-American wrestler uh, at Arizona State University, junior college national champion at Iowa Central Community College. Now, we'll round back to that a little bit. And uh, I got Kane Velasquez in the house. Kane, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Man, not not too bad. Staying busy, uh, as always. And, uh, you know, excited to talk to you, man. This is uh, it's an interview that I've wanted to do for a long time. And I got to start with the story because – you know, I talked about Iowa Central Community College. That's where I did uh, my junior college time, my first couple of years of college. And I just remember, you know, year is 2000, walking through the halls and seeing this ginormous dude, man, that kind of had a <laughs> – never seemed to have a smile on his face. But maybe it's because I didn't know yeah. you in the background. But <laughs> just looked dead serious all the time. And I'm like, all I could think about was all 160 pounds of me. I just do not want to get mixed up with that dude. Um so it's crazy that, you know, this far along later, however long it's been, 20 years, um, you know, I get a chance to talk to you and it's a totally different setting. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was amazing. Uh, just the whole experience there at um, Iowa Central. Um, you know, great program, great just history of, uh, of uh, great wrestling there. Um, Absolutely. Just great experience for me, you know, coming from Arizona and – uh more of like a culture shock but met a lot of great people you know a lot a lot of great people friends that i still have uh today um just an amazing experience so you know overall yeah yeah no doubt you know it uh i i definitely i look fondly upon those days as well man it it, it got me to where i'm at today so definitely a good foundation yeah. And uh, yeah, what a great wrestling school for a junior college. Just fantastic. Well, you know, let's talk about current day. Uh, we just got through. I, I feel like it's kind of winding down uh, the great pandemic of 2020 and 2021. You're out in California, yeah. which a lot of people consider, you know, ground zero for this thing because it's been super tight, uh, heavy regulations. Uh, what yeah. was the year like for you? Uh, just 2020 up until today. Uh, man, just just hanging out with the family, you know, it's, 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 it's what it's been. Um, yeah, you know, it's, which is all, all positive from there. Um, you know, the, um, for me, for my, my career, when I was, when I was, uh, training and fighting, um, that's when we had our, our, uh, our daughter and she's now just turned 12 and, um, I missed a lot of it. Like, yeah. you know, all the dad stuff, the baby stuff. Um, I was just so, it's a di different world, you know, that, um, I didn't truly just like let it go when I got home. Like I, like I felt like I did, but I was still in it, you know? Uh, so I'm kind of just knowing like what I miss now because, um, I have a, I have a three-year-old son, um, as well. And I'm taking care of him like, like most, most of the day and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was something that I missed, you know? And, yeah. um, it's a bittersweet, you know, I, I did something really great for myself, you know, for other people, I'm sure out there. Um, but I missed out on, on that really just quality time, just, you know, day in and day out, yeah. uh, with my daughter and my, and my, my wife. So, um, it's something I, I didn't even know I, I missed, you know, and yep. yeah, or now I, I yes. totally, I can relate a hundred percent, you know, before the pandemic, I was traveling, doing announcing all over the world, man, you know, 15, 16 shows a year. Um, so I missed a lot as well. I, it feels like I never once hit a, a good Halloween. <laughs> like I've never taken mm -hmm. my kids trick or treating, man, you know, over like the last yeah. four or five years. So, um, but you know, and I didn't get to do it this year because everything was crazy, but that being said, it is so nice to reset and spend time with them and spend time with your wife. And so I could totally relate on that, man. It, 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 it really was better, bittersweet. It was very sad what was happening. But at the same time, I think a lot of people need to reconnect with their family sometimes. So it was a good opportunity to sit in there and see your kids every day till the time they wake mm -hmm. up to the time they go to sleep. That's pretty priceless. Yeah, that's the best, man. Um, again, like I didn't know what I was missing, you know, until. Until I take care of my son, um, just the, the things that I did, the things that got me joy, that gave me joy, especially at his age. Um, you know, I lived, I lived through it 
through him. I see his eyes and yeah. um, seeing him, you know, figure something out for the first time or, or, or whatever, you know, but just that, that experience of like, wow, like, like this made him feel like this, like, look at the smile or the laughter. Like that's what it's about. No um, yeah. Yeah. So, it, so yeah, just, just doing that, man. I mean, just again, you know, taking it all in with the family and uh, just, just growing, you know, ourselves, you know, no I, I think it's great, man. That, that's a great thing. You know, you can't, you, we didn't have that when the pandemic was here, you know, so take advantage of it. Right. While yeah. we can. Yeah. No doubt. You know, so, so let's take it all the way back, man. Uh, born in Cali, uh, grew mm-hmm. up in Arizona, uh, youngest of three kids. I believe I got that right. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, yep. I mean, you probably already had to kind of fend for yourself. Is that kind of where that fighting spirit came from? You know, fending off your older siblings. Um, you know, where, where did that come from? You think early on? Uh, it's just, in, uh, it's just in me, man. Um, it's in like my, my parents, you know, I could see it in them. Like they, um, like they, they put all the energy, like in the stuff that, that, that they wanted to do, you know, or, or things that, that they had to do to provide for us, you know, and I just saw that, I just saw it from a young age, like they had that, you know, and, um, yeah. it's like, I didn't even care if I knew, like, if I knew I had it or not, but I just knew when I went out and, and, and did something like physically, um, it made me think and also like push myself, um, you know, like with just with a little bit of pressure, like it just shows what, what you're made out of, right? Like what you can endure yeah. and what you can kind of overcome. And, um, man, just, I've always loved just that, just pushing my, my, my body, my mind, um, to places I didn't even know I can go. Right. Like, yeah. so you, you get to learn a lot about yourself in all those, you know, situations, um, of, of training constantly. Um, and, yeah, man, it's just, it's just something that that's already in you, but then you kind of just uh, tweak it, you know, as as you as you kind of go on. Yeah, no, well, you know, mm-hmm. you 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 wrestled obviously uh, in high school and played football as well, which I didn't know that originally. Yeah. Did did linebacker, captain of both the wrestling team and the football team. You know, was there ever a time when maybe the football thing was an option and you thought maybe, you know, this is what I want to do? Did you love it as much? Yeah. I know wrestling is such an intense thing and, you know, people really love wrestling if they're wrestlers. Was there ever a chance yeah. that maybe you go and play football? There was. Yeah, there was a big chance. Um, it just worked out, man, that um, my grades just weren't that good. You know, yeah. like I, I got I got a lot more offers to play football than than wrestling. Um and I'm talking about like any, any school pretty much that I wanted to go to, well, if my grades were, you know, were there, but as far as like, uh, like talent wise, um, I was pretty close to going to football and then yeah. I broke my foot my senior year. Um, and then all the, everyone stopped calling, you know? Um, so I looked into, um, Iowa central and went over there and, and just, yeah, man, I just knew like, if, I could have done it in football too, but I was like, like you said, like it was just something about wrestling that I had to keep doing and keep pursuing. That's a big crossroads though. I mean, you know, if you were to chose the football route, I mean, who knows what today looks like, you know, I mean, that's, that's so interesting that you kind of came to that crossroads and you had to make that decision and you have, you end up at Iowa central, you know, you could have ended up at uh, doing a last chance you type thing. I don't know if you've watched that on Netflix, but you know, yes. I don't quite have the awesome. great you go and play down in Mississippi or something and mm-hmm. um, end up at a D1 or something like that. But huge crossroads. Yeah. You end up choosing wrestling. I mean, it's paid off, obviously. We'll get we'll get to that. But um, like I said, you know, Iowa Central happens. Um, you know, you go on and win, you know, national championship at Iowa Central. That's a huge move. Um, a lot of a lot of big names have floated through Iowa Central. Um, yeah. I believe was Joe Soto there at the same time you were? Joe Soto, no, no, he wasn't. Okay, okay. Uh, Joe Soto, obviously, uh, Colby Cummington had some time there, and then John Jones, you know, obviously everybody knows what John did uh, as well. You know, what is it about that program? Just, I I am kind of curious, you know, with the coaching, I've heard the coaching is pretty legendary over there. What is it about that program at Iowa Central that kind of set it apart? Um, It was more, it was just like, when I was there, it was more just the, the, the team camaraderie, you know. Um, I feel like um, junior college is, is so it's so weird to, to hard. It's very hard to develop people. You know, you got to bring in kids that are, that are very talented because you only get two years with them, right? Um, yeah. 
we just the group of, of guys that we had, man, we just like, we just grinded every day. We just wrestled every day. You know, that, that's all we did, man. We had a lot of great guys um, on the squad. A lot of guys that are really just, um, you know, top level guys all through the nation. Um, and the coaching staff was great too, you know, but it was more just, we just, Dude, we just wrestled a lot. Like it wasn't yeah. a lot of technique. It was it was just like the hard grind, wrestle every day, put a lot of hard work in. Um, and yeah, yeah, we, we had an an awesome season. Yes. So I gotta ask you this because you know, obviously, I, I grew up in Rockwell City and went to high school there, then ended up in Fort Dodge. So I know what that life's like. There was not much to do in Fort Dodge at mm. all. Yeah. So, all right. So there's a few options. I got to ask you, did you end up out in a cornfield at some sort of cornfield party? Did you end up at Chevy's downtown in Fort Dodge? Like, I got to know, you know, what did you do when you weren't wrestling? Because uh, there wasn't very many options. There was and yeah, the kids don't <laughs> like parties, you know, hanging out with, with whoever's there, you know, at the school yeah. or like the people, uh, just the people that, that, you know, the good buddies that we wrestled with, you know, we came really close with, um yeah there wasn't many things to do there so i mean we uh like like walmart was one of the hangouts you know <laughs> like or, or otherwise yeah just the party stuff yeah but um but the, yeah that it was it was great for me to like, experience that right but it but yeah. it showed me that like i want to go back home after this like i, I want to get my <laughs> degree yeah. I want to go back to Arizona, but this is great. Like, thank you for this opportunity and this, this experience, but <laughs> yes. it made me realize I want to go back home. I, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. I don't go back very often myself, to be honest with you. So uh, you crush it over at Arizona State, obviously have a great career over there and then, you know, have a pretty seamless transition uh, over to MMA and into jujitsu yeah. and all these things. How did that all work out where you end up, you know, up at AKA, which, you know, one of the best uh, MMA training schools that you're going to find, obviously yeah. the legacy yeah. speaks for itself. Um, how'd you end up at AKA? And second part of that question is just give me an idea of a training session of a sparring session, because I've always heard that it's very, very intense, uh, very yeah. physical at AKA more than a lot of other schools. Yeah, we, uh, so my uh, wrestling coach over at Arizona state, um, I told him my junior year that I want to start fighting. Um, that's, uh, Tom Ortiz, um, okay. three-time All-American for Arizona State. He was on the national team, the national, uh, team that, that, that won it for, for Arizona State, uh, like in 80, 80, 89, 87. Um, so I told him that I want to start, start fighting after wrestling. And he's the one who got me in touch with AKA, you know, he, um, I worked at, at some of the places in, in Phoenix and stuff. And um, I just feel like it wasn't the right fit. You know, I needed a little yeah. more uh, like that grind every day kind of thing. Um, so I went out to AKA for about two weeks while I was in college still. Well, no, about a week. And it's just to kind of see if I, if I liked it and see if the transition would would, uh, would show anything. Right. Yeah. Because um, I was green. I didn't know shit. So, yeah. Went in first week, loved it right away. And it's like, we still talk about this. Like um, my coach, Javier Mendez, I met him for the first time there. And he was always like, people always told him, hey, we got this Mexican heavyweight from Arizona State that wants to come here and train and fight. And he's like, Mexican heavyweight? He's like, no. Like, <laughs> like it does not. What is this? <laughs> it does not exist. <laughs> you know, like, it's just not, it just hasn't worked out. Like, nah, like, what he was pitching in his, in his head wasn't what, what, what I was. So I walked <laughs> in, and he's expecting this dude just to be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, like, just, you know, I don't know what, he's, what he was expecting. But he saw me, and he was like, whoa, I was like. <laughs> like how much you weigh, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And um no man, he saw he saw that I had it right away just from the first trade, just for my first sparring technique sparring session. Yeah. First time playing around. Javier knew he was like, he was like, dude, I know already, like you would like when you had it. Um so started going there, it was all great, man. And dude, just the training sessions that uh, well it depends like the sparring sessions were the craziest thing you could ever yeah like see or experience um <laughs> it's like i haven't had a harder fight 
than yeah. than that, you know. Um, every day it's like every day you try to be the top dog and it doesn't necessarily happen, you know. And you, and you think that that's how it should happen because you know you're the UFC champion, heavyweight champion, going in for practice. Um, but then you have like two or three guys rotating on you as you're sparring, and you're sparring 100. percent You're sparring against Daniel Cormier, you yeah. know. I was about Which, to get. I was about to break into that, man. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta ask you uh, so, this. Yeah, let me let me, let me ask you about Cormier. Uh, let me sidetrack because, you know, when did how long were you there before Cormier showed up? Just out of curiosity, like you were there for a few years, right? I was there six months to a year around there. Like I was still like, okay. Yeah, about a year or so. I think. I think yes. Yeah. Okay. So what yeah, were those so, like with you and Daniel? I mean, because I, I can only imagine. I mean, you guys are really considered you know even the whole landscape of heavyweights i consider mm -hmm. you guys you know you guys are top five guys you know what i mean what you mm -hmm. guys did in the sport and it, it's in, it's insane really a lot of people consider you know I, I think it's one and two sometimes you know a lot of people consider yeah. you know is it daniel is it you you know what i mean so okay. i can only imagine you guys being in the same camp what that would even be like trying to one-up each other the competition level what was yeah. that like it's great it's fucking yeah. awesome Fucking, um, dude, he gave everything, everything he had, you know, I gave everything I had for each sparring session, you know, when we got to those really hard, like, you know, uh, it's, it's just like this, like, I, like I do something where it tops him and then like, it just kind of yeah goes like that. Then that's, that's the sparring session, man. You just try to go as hard as you can. And, you know, um, you just, again, you just get to learn a lot about yourself. So I've, I've learned that, that that's like the most I've learned about myself in, you know, in get, getting ready for fights or just knowing what I have, like when it comes to a fight, yeah. you know, like what it, what it comes down to, 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 to go hundred percent in, in every position and to not give up anywhere, you know, cause you can't you have to just keep fighting no matter what, even if you're losing whatever, like, sure. You, you just learn so much from yourself, but it's a lot of, well, it's a lot of trauma, you know, that you go through, but you, you learn to like rise above it. Sure. It's okay. It, be really comfortable in there. You know, almost love it. Um, kind of, kind of thing. So yeah, man, we, we learned a lot from each other, man. We've, I gave everything I, I had. It seems like I he would be, it seems like he would be talking a lot and you wouldn't be talking as much. Like, you know what I mean? It just doesn't There's seem no like your talk. demeanor to talk a whole lot. You know what I mean? As far as like talking a whole lot of trash, I might be wrong about that, but you know, D Daniel had to be talking the whole time. Hell no. We're not talking. When it's, when it's go, when it was go time, like we yeah. were going, there's no talking, man. We were fucking. Not like, even before or after? Not even, not even just the shit talking? The, no, because you know? we knew what we, it was in for, dude. <laughs> it was like, a, it was a real deal. Okay. You know, we're not, you know, we're yeah. not, we're not in there like, if I give him a good shot, I'm not going to try to go for the kill, you yeah, know, yeah. but I'm going to give him a fucking good shot and try to, yeah, you know, no try to ring his bell. And he's doing that for me too. Um, so no, man, there's no talking. Like we're again, so focused. Like, like if we're both like, you know, again, putting everything in trying to win, you know, so we have to be just super like hyper alert, you know, the whole yeah. time kind of thing. And we were mad. And after it was just like, you just be drained the whole day, you know. You just went through a whole fight. Here's a, here's a good question. Do you feel like that either one of you would have gotten to the heights that you got to if you didn't have each other to grind off of and sharpen each other? Do you feel like you would have got would've. all the way up there? I mean, or, or Daniel for that matter. I mean, because you know Daniel was a solid, solid yeah. wrestler, obviously, and you were too. But you guys got your striking up mm -hmm. as well. You had the whole the whole kit and caboodle by the end of it. Do you think if you didn't sharpen each yeah. other, you guys would have got that high? Yeah, we would have. We just didn't. Okay. We just had to find a way, you know. It, it would have happened. It didn't mean. It doesn't mean it would have happened that easy or that yeah. fast or in the way that we did it, you know. Um, it might have been more of a struggle and 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 all that stuff involved, you know. But um, we would have found a way because that's what we wanted for ourselves. So yeah, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. So you know, obviously, you you go on the awesome run in the UFC, and you got a big champion in front of you, Brock Lesnar wow you know like i remember like it was yeah. yesterday you know sitting with my friends watching this fight dude and um you go on to win this fight and i look back in that fight and one thing that i think you know just as an aside here kind of as a quasi analyst i do play by play but you know yeah. 
it seemed like Brock really fell in love with his striking in that fight. And he felt real, real comfortable with his striking in that fight. Um, do you feel like, what do you think, what was the thing that kind of swung the pendulum in that fight between you two? Obviously you, your cardio goes for days and days and days mm -hmm. one of your hallmarks, but you were tagging him, obviously. I mean, he, yeah. you hit that shot and he goes flip flopping across the, the cage. I mean, I've never seen yeah. something so wild. Um, yeah, yeah. Just talk about that fight. What do you think it was really that kind of got you that win? Besides you obviously um, working your ass off for it. I mean, and, and having a great fight. Yeah, a lot of things, man. A lot of things kind of kind of contributed to, you know, for that win. Um, well, on my side, yeah, just working my ass off. But it's like, do like an analyzing his style. Um, he wasn't to me. He, he he wasn't comfortable with the striking. Um, he's a big dude, hits hard, but not comfortable to stay in there. No, and, it, it and never looked it, fluid it, it, ever, right? I mean, his striking yeah. never fluid. Yeah. Yeah, so so I so I know he always wants to take down like watching all the guys like fight him, you know, like guys that that uh, were got taken down by him and like and were kept on the ground, you know, he, yeah. he won. And then uh Shane Carwin, you know, blocked the first couple of takedowns, right? Hit him a good yeah. good times, you know, and then kind of burnt himself out from there and then it was done. Um so I knew like his his I saw it like this, his only way to to beat me is to like knock me out with a good punch or to hold me down and yeah. like that that to me wasn't possible like nobody could could hold right. me down you know? yeah yeah uh, yeah I was just naturally very good at standing up like whenever I wanted um so then the training session was we had uh, this national champion um, heavyweight wrestler from uh, Missouri Mark Ellis. Okay. Come in. He you know, he started training and fighting, um, and then also Daniel Cormier. And yeah. we start out the the sparring sessions like this. We're in full gear, so I got sixteen ounce gloves on. I got shin guards, knee pads, headgear, um, and they started me off laying down on oh, the wow. canvas. Okay, laying flat on my back, and then either DC or Mark lay on me. Yeah. Like I'm like this, lay on me and I have to get up. So just countless wow. times of that, getting up, getting up, getting up, you know, like whenever the coaches wanted to stop it and put me on my back, they would. Right. Yeah. Just the case. So I got really comfortable in there. I was already, but like with those guys on me, like I didn't know, like no one could help me down, you know? So yeah, got into the fight and it was that like, you know, stop, the takedowns where yeah. he had to be on his feet a little more. Um, let the ha hands kind of open up a little bit and, you know, took him down once as well. Like, you know, just keep him guessing, right. Type of thing. Yeah. And just from then on, just pick my shots. Like, don't just throw crazy. Like, yeah, really hit him, tag him, cut him up a little bit. Um, take my time with it, you know, kind of thing. And, that was it, man. But it was just, it was just taking away his offense is what, is what did it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. You know, well, I mean, you know, not only do you win the UFC heavyweight championship, but you win it against Brock Lesnar on such a big stage. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, man, you know, what was going through your head, man? Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about your mom and dad and the hardships they had and working so hard for yeah. what they had did all that was just like a flood of emotions of all that all at the same time when you won that yeah. championship. Yeah. That was the peak, you know, it was just the build up, like for that. Right. Um, it's like, that was, that was the one thing that I wanted the most out of anything else, you know, was yeah. that it was like that, that was my dream. Um, you know, I love to fight. And that was my dream to go out there and, and do that and uh, to do it on, on a big scale. So, um, yeah. yeah, just again, just just everything prepped me for that, you know, to, to go out there and, and be and be victorious in that in that way. Yeah. Did you do you still did you stay in touch with Brock? Like, were you guys amicable after the fight? I mean, he's known to be a guy that's very much to himself, doesn't seem to have yeah. a whole lot of friends. Did you guys always keep a good relationship or, or nothing? No, really? No, I never talked to him or anything. 
It's interesting, uh, right? Because it seems like most guys, when they have a knockdown drag out, just an MMA in general, doesn't matter if it's an amateur yeah. fight or if it's a pro fight. seems like if you have a fight with somebody, you kind of have a bond for the rest of your life, right? And, and that's strange. Well, I guess it's not strange. I guess that's just Brock's personality, right? Or, yeah, or is it your personality than too? Mine too, you know. Pretty much. Okay, I was about to say, yeah, is that yeah, your mine, personality mine, too? Mine doesn't help in the fact of like doing, you know, doing that. But uh, I'm okay with it. I'm good. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, you yeah, guys are gonna yeah. have you're gonna have another run in here <laughs> in a few years down the road here. So, you know, you you obviously have some great yeah. wars, man. And, and in my opinion, you kind of cemented yourself as you know, top one or two heavyweights of all time, which is incredible, Thank you. you know, especially since, I mean, we've had a lot of those heavyweights right here on this show. You know, I've, I've talked yeah. to Dan Severn and I've talked to Don Fry and, and some of these guys that made such a huge impact and uh, to be on top of that mountain is amazing. You know, obviously you very worked cool. very hard for that. Um, the wars with Dos Santos obviously were, uh, it was wild. Um, but then, you know, it seemed like when your retirement came in, it just, it was kind of unceremonious, right? Like yeah. it's just, it just sort yeah. of happened. And it was like, okay, yeah. Kane's retired now. And I was like, you know what? You know what I mean? Like, but it was seemed like yeah. it was a lot of injuries and everything kind of came to a head. Can you walk yeah. me through that? Because like I said, it didn't even seem like it was covered a whole lot when it happened. It's just like yeah. I said, Oh, Kane's Kane's not fighting anymore. And that was weird. Mm -hmm. So kind of walk us through it. Yeah. Um, I just want it just got to a point, man. Even now, it's just um, I go hard, dude. I go hard all the time. Yeah. So yesterday, for Mother's Day, um, I set up a little camping, like like uh, you know, thing outside in the backyard. Yeah. Uh, um, and we're playing kickball. I set that up as well. Man, I'm too competitive. I'm playing with my kids and my daughter and my my wife, and I'm fucking like arguing over like rules and shit. Like, what yeah. is that? <laughs> you know, I go hard, dude. I fucking go out and train. I don't fuck around, dude. I don't. I feel you. Like, like this is too, this go, will push this too hard. And, and yeah. <laughs> things tend to break. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, but I love it, dude. It's just, that's just me. And I. Was it really, I was, was it a really um, hard pill, pill to swallow, though? I mean, like, was that, no, was that tough? Did you have a tough time? Like, a couple months where you're no, like, you know, nothing like that? No, no. Well, no, it was, it's, it's happened. You know, it's like slowly happened, right? Like it's, 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 um, it's time. Like, like, you know, like keep creeping up on you. Right. Like as years go by, you know, it's almost like, um, things change, you know, a little, a little less intensive, uh, like an intensity, like workouts, uh, a little yeah. more recovery kind of things. And it gets comes to a point where it's so, it's so hard to like, to, to have the recovery stuff, um, even match like what, what I'm doing kind of thing. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, I just do I don't know. That's just what I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I, I just knew like, okay, it was, it was, it just wasn't how I wanted to do this. Right. Like, okay. like I want to do it how I used to do it and that I, that I couldn't, uh, well, I, like it was just, it was just harder. So I just, man, doing pro wrestling, like, it was just fun. It was fun. It was lighthearted. Like, yeah, I just ha I had fun out there. You know, it wasn't more. It wasn't the uh, so serious. Like, go out and kill people. It was um, you know. Very but fun. but I could tell, like you like you said, you go hard though, and you and you could tell yes. it in your matches that you were, you know, very serious about this. And a lot of guys that make that crossover or celebrities, etc., that make the crossover. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, like we just saw it at WrestleMania with uh, Bad Bunny. That dude looked amazing. Like, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know how much training he put in, but he looked mm -hmm. incredible, you know, especially for being a guy that's, you know, a singer, you know, who would have expected him to put on a performance yeah. like that? And I felt like you were having those performances as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you really stuck out because you really took it to heart. Um, you go down and you train in Mexico, right? So what was that process like, you know? you know, getting down there training and the whole Lucha Libre, like all that. What was that like? Was that like, uh, dude, it was one, just again, one of the best experiences I've ever had. Was it an easy um, transition for you? It's like kind of like Kurt Angle, right? So Kurt Angle, they say mm -hmm. he was like one of the fastest learners yeah. and like, it was so easy for him to make that transition. Was it pretty much mm -hmm. the same with you? Like you could kind of get it pretty quickly. Yeah. Especially well with the Lucha for sure. Um, yeah. It's very much like wrestling, you know, it's, um, 
it's fast paced. It's um, it's acrobatic. It's flows, you know, uh, yeah. flows and stuff. So, yeah, like I was, I was, I had like two months of training before I did uh, Triple Mania, which is their their the yeah. big the big uh, Triple A's big show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was working on some stuff that I thought like they might want me to do. Like I don't know, it was confusing, you know. And yeah. then I got there to the show. Um, they were like, "Well, what do you want to do?" And I was like, "Dude, I was like, I want to do lucha stuff, which stuff that I wasn't even practicing. Like I've never yeah. even done." And I did her. I practiced it all the day before, dude. The, the <laughs> rana, the fucking flips, all that shit. And they're like, "They're like, do you want to do this?" Do, do you? And I'm like, "I don't know. You just tell me if I can do it." I'll try it and you can tell me if I can do it out when I go out there. Were they expecting like, just like a hard nose, like MMA style? Is that what they were expecting? Like from you? Did they, ex- were they pretty surprised that you wanted to do all the Rana's and, mm-hmm. and, and the, so you're saying they were surprised by that. I'm yeah. They were, yeah. Yeah. They're surprised. That, that's what I told them that, that, that I wanted to do. I mean, I could have gone out there and done like, uh, you know, MMA stuff, but it'd be too just boring for me. You know, I would like to yeah. like, push myself a little bit, surprise some people um yeah I, I surprised them very much and then so so i was so psycho clown was my my uh my teammate out there my uh, taxi partner okay. he was the one who was telling me to do all, all the lucha stuff yeah and um and carlos was uh, it was the uh he's he's the uh the guy that does all the matches and stuff and he was like yeah the promoter yeah Co- conan you know conan yeah of course conan yeah. from uh from yeah so yeah he was the one like he was like I don't know I don't know about this but Psycho was like man do it if you want to do it do it so we did man and it all worked out and went out that night and the next night and we did it um it was all yeah it was awesome yeah it was awesome it was so fun yeah so you know you end up doing the Saudi Arabia show at WWE um working alongside Rey Mysterio which mm-hmm. is uh, kind of like a fantasy, you know, team up, you know what I'm saying? Having Rey Mysterio yeah. and Cain Velasquez on the same team. I will say this, you know, as exciting as it was, and maybe it's because I've been a little disconnected from the product a little bit, but obviously I tuned in to watch your stuff and to see what happened in your mm-hmm. matchups. Um, but it, it seemed like you taking on Brock Lesnar. And when you first showed up, it was a big deal, but it maybe should have got even more fanfare. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's a big moment, bro. Like considering, mm-hmm. What went down? Yeah. Obviously, you you knocking him across the cage in the UFC. You show up, and it, it almost, in my opinion, kind of flew under the radar a little bit, like from a macro yeah. field. Like, um, were you happy with the way everything turned out, or were you wanting something a little bit bigger? Bigger, obviously, yeah, bigger. Um, it's just the, the scenario that I was in, you know, at that moment, um, not having any experience, you know, in that world, and um like with COVID hitting and, and everything else like there's no you know like I couldn't go in anymore and like and yeah I need to go in and like and, and be developed right in this in this in this uh in the sport right if you want uh a certain type of like of, if you want a certain product out of me like I can produce but you gotta give me time because I've never done this before of course you know what I yeah mean? yeah like, like never so I, I just need time. I need to be in there and you know, practicing and just make it, make this second nature, right? Right. Where I'm not even thinking, you know, like when I'm out there, like when in fighting and training, like, I don't think I just know what to do from, from, from what I see. Well, yeah. I'm not there yet. Fucking thinking so much that, that it's like, you can tell I'm thinking. So yeah. it's just development. That's it, man. Take us some time development. Um, but the, the Lucha, cause it's a different style it translates for me a lot better and smoother Yeah. right now. Um, and, and I love watching it and, and, and I'll do it too. Like the, that's sort of like a wrestling, you know? Um, and I'm actually doing a show in December as well for, for triple A again. So okay. Yeah. That's all, that's what I was about to ask you. So, you know, what's the future hold? Like, it sounds like you really do enjoy yourself out there. So, Obviously, there's a future in that. And, you know, crowds are coming back, which is an amazing thing. And it seems like things are sort of trending yeah. uh, closer to normal, uh, which is a good thing. Is, you know, obviously, AAA is amazing. Do you feel like you'd be happy if if that's kind of where it landed and you just did the AAA thing? Or do you want to find your way back to WWE or, or an AEW, mm-hmm. which is surging right now? Um, is that something that you would love to see in the cards, like further down the line? 
So for me, um, I love the AAA, and I'm going to keep doing that right now. Um, I love WWE as well. I love all it, but um, no, I I first got to develop myself yeah. in that way in order for me to go out there and, and, and stuff. You know what I mean? Like that that needs to be first. Then from there, it's like, well, whatever, whatever you kind of want to do, yeah. you know? That's good, though. I mean, it's yeah. good that you it, – it's good that, you know, at least for me, like to hear you say that, that makes me feel good because I, I can tell there's going to be a future for you, man, and, and that, you know, you want to get better at it, and it's not just a one-off because obviously going to Saudi yeah. Arabia is a huge paycheck, you know. That's a big deal yeah. to go over there. And you could have just called it quits and said, hey, I marked it off the bucket list. I wrestled Brock in Saudi Arabia. That's a pretty big moment, and that had been it. But it sounds like the competitor in you is not going to let that die down, and uh, we're going to see more Cain Velasquez in wrestling. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep doing it, man. I'm going to keep doing some stuff out there, you know. Just, again, just have fun with it, you know. Just have fun with, with, with all of it, whatever I kind of want to get into and and, and feel like I, I can kind of contribute something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, man. You know, switching, you know, when you think about the MMA scene right now, obviously you've been a little removed for about two years now. Um, do, do you – is it still so so soon that you're not really getting the itch at all, or or do you see certain things and you're like, damn, I mean, I could smash that dude, or you you see like ways that you could beat a guy and you're like, damn, if I got the right payday, I could go back and do this, you know? No, man, I'm. It's a wrap. Really, is is the door closed? The, is it shut? I haven't, is it the, I haven't even watched a fight in like those years, you know. Unless I'm at a friend's house and he has a yeah. mom, or someone might, might have a mom because you lived it, right? Yeah. I yeah lived breathed it. Um, I know it so well. Yeah, I feel like I know it so well. Like I don't, you know, I don't need to like see it. Um, but it's weird. It's like when I, but when I do see it, yeah, then it's like okay, then I'm like, you know, doing all that work and stuff in my head. Um, but no, man, I I haven't watched any any fights. Um, I've been hanging out with my kids. Do it, like <laughs> I feel I, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, dude. Like. I hang out with my kids. I wrestle with like with my daughter a little bit, you know, yeah. like I don't know where I'll just put like a single leg on her. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? Like in the kitchen, you know, and then I move her around just enough. So she got good, you know, she has good balance. She, she realizes like she needs to stay up. She's a, she needs to be uh, working right here to stay up kind of thing. Yeah. It's That's funny. Cool. I did that with her a couple of sessions. And then one of, one of our, our friends, uh, they have a boy that's, uh, Younger than her, but like big, big, big kid. Yeah. And he did the same thing. And she was, my daughter was like laughing because she was like, my, my, my dad does this to me and, and I know what to do. And dude, yeah. she was like stuffing all this stuff so easy. Like he was like, she was playing with him. Yeah, so it was very cool to see That's that. That's awesome. And then, um, yeah, my son, he's three and dude, I don't even teach him any fights or anything, but that's all he does with me. He just fights with yeah. me. He he loves it. Yeah, yeah. So that's so I'm still around it in, in that way. Yeah. So I got to ask you real quick before we shut this thing down. Um, I, DC back in the news. Uh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, basically, you know, grabbing a hold of Jake Paul at the UFC event. Uh, talking about you know punishing and torturing Jake Paul if they were to have an MMA fight, which obviously would happen uh i want to know yeah. your your input on that as you're watching this from afar these youtube guys that are just making all these waves doing these huge pay-per-views um but it just seems like you're taking a little bit of a reach saying you're going to do something to daniel cormier what, what were you thinking when you're watching something like that um <laughs> did you just pray for him you know and what? Say, it's, good luck it's no, nah, man, you're asking for it, bro. Go out there and get it. <laughs> you want that? Go get it. Um, you know what? It doesn't matter who it is. Like, um, you know, if it, it doesn't matter what, what they do for a living. Like, they, like, Jake knows how to fight. Sure. You know, I've seen Absolutely his, like, he knows how to fight. So, he's doing this. Hey, it sparks interest in anywhere. Cool. Um dude he wants to go yeah he wants to go in there and, and taste it okay go ahead and do it you know yeah it, 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 it's crazy yeah. to watch a lot of people get tore up about it about the possibility of it 
yeah, I like a good spectacle. It doesn't bother me a bit. So, you know, bring that yeah. sort of stuff on. I think we kind of need a refresher. We need something different than, you know, what yeah. we see out of the UFC and, and PFL mm-hmm. and, you know, just all the different yeah. shows. Right. You know, so, um, yeah. Uh, so you were out there with one of your fighters at UAE warriors. That's how you and I kind of yes. linked up, um, out in Abu Dhabi and, you know, coaching that aspect, you know, is that something that you could see yourself doing as well? Is it maybe just coaching your kids or is it going to be, you know, maybe coaching fighters now? Like, is that something you want to do? No, not, not, not in that way, but I, I think I always coach in some way, but not, um, I don't want to do as a that. head coach or yeah, that sort of thing. It's too much. Yeah. That's too much time. Um, it's a lot of development, you know, for, for certain people and, 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 I love it. I do, but it's, um, yeah, it's too much time, you know, yeah. like, not that there's too much time. It's just, it's different, man. It's like the, a fighter has their own mentality and their own vision of how they should be. And a coach yeah. has, you know, has their vision as well, but also sees things on the outside and there's other people that see things on the outside too. And, you know, I've seen a lot where, if every fighter was just open, like, okay, yeah, yeah, let, let's do this. Let's try this. Let's work on this, you know, and just free flowing, yeah. like no matter what, but that's not the case. Fighters a lot of times are fucking just basket cases, you know, like, <laughs> again, you're going out and you're going yeah. out and fucking get it, going to go for a fight. So that's true. Yes. I can understand why you're a mess right now. <laughs> you have your yes. I, I get that. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's it, you know you're trying to coach them and yeah. uh, it's it's just like it's being a psychiatrist and all that shit you know yeah. all for one right the babysitter a mom a dad all that stuff um which i could do that at home but i mean yeah. i always help people you know any, any way that i can but that's i've done that for so long and just like I, I understand i get it all right last question all right. Uh, obviously, you know, the same time you were dominating, you know, there were guys in different organizations doing their thing. And um, let's just say you could get that one opponent. You're a competitor. There had to be somebody out there you would have loved to test yourself against. You know, is it, you know, a Fedor mm-hmm. or something like that? Um, is it a John Jones, you know, him coming up to heavyweight? Is there a fight that kind of sat out there or that you've thought about even, you know, since you've been retired that you would have liked to had that you never got a chance to have? No, no. Um, I was never, I was never about like picking an opponent or anything. It was yeah. just, uh, it didn't matter to me, you know. Um, I feel like the guys that I fought were, you know, the best guys in that in that moment. I'm, I'm happy with what I did. Um, but I guess like I, I guess the most joy, the most you know things that I got out of all this is 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 the training. You know, the training sessions, the training, the learning um the learning of, of the body but also the mentality and you know and all together learn how to work with certain people you yeah. know um learn how to be a teammate how to be selfless you know just um i was never a big uh i was you know i was never a big team captain you know yeah. um as far as speaking out or anything else like that so it was more of um i would try to show you you know i would try to bust my ass and just try to go hard, you know, and yeah. hopefully that, that motivates some people. No doubt. Well, Kane, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the time. Uh, this was no awesome. And, uh, yeah, there's more things we could go into, but maybe we'll do a part two sometime. Uh, you know, be safe out there, my friend, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. You as well. Thank you very much. All right, there he is, guys. Kane Velasquez right here on In This Corner. What an awesome interview, man. Uh, great catching up with Kane and uh, getting into all these topics, man. Just a real genuine dude. Uh, you can find us uh, on all your social media platforms at In This Corner MMA. And uh, we'll see you next time. This is Cyrus Fees. We'll see you next time on In This Corner. Mm-hmm.